Hey everyone and welcome back to Financial Madness where we look at all things personal finance. In today's video we will be delving into the important topic when it comes to retirement and that is what are your options to take money from your pension? Specifically we'll be looking at drawdowns and annuities and how they can be used to fund your retirement years. So without further ado I'm Kozan from Financial Madness helping you be better with your money. So before we go into what a drawdown or annuity is, we need to take a step back to understand how they fall into the context of pensions. So most of us, when we are saving for our retirement, we put our money away in a private pension pot. Now there are two ways on how we do this. We have something called a defined contribution pension, which is what the majority of us will have. They are very common in workplace pensions and private personal pensions like SIPs. The way these work is that you and your employer, if it is a workplace pension, put money into a fund which in return is invested in the market with the idea that the fund makes a good enough return in the long run and you can retire on this money. The second type is a defined benefits pension and these have become less and less common in recent years but they are still prevalent if you have a workplace pension and you work for the public sector. This type of pension can only be obtained via the workplace and works by having a retirement salary paid out from retirement until the day you die. And normally the amount of this retirement salary is determined by your years of service and your salary whilst you were working there. For the purpose of this video, we are going to be looking at options for withdrawing from your defined contribution pension. And that is because defined benefit pensions is a bit more simple when it comes to retirement. You essentially get a fixed salary until the day you die. For defined contribution pensions, however, we have two key ways on how we can access it, a drawdown or an annuity. And a secret third option, subscribe to this channel. Now this is a perfect segue to look into the definitions of what these two things are. Starting off with drawdowns. Now this is the more flexible of the two options when it comes to accessing your private pension. I'm going to explain drawdowns through an example as it's probably easier to digest this way. But by definition, it is a method to take a proportion of your pension pot as income, while the rest of the money remains in your pot invested in the market until you need to draw from it again. Let's say at retirement you have £100,000 saved in your pension pot and you would like to start withdrawing this money to fund your retirement years because you are no longer working. With a drawdown you have the option to take a proportion of your pension as a lump sum or you can make regular payments to yourself while the rest of your money remains in your pot invested in the market. Let's say in year one I wanted to take out £15,000 as a regular income. The remaining 75 k will stay invested in the market until year two where hopefully it has grown in value. Let's say it grew by 8% and now when you need to make a withdrawal your pension fund has increased from 75k to 81k and then you take another 15k for year two reducing the pot down to 66k and this 66k remains invested in the market and so on and so forth. Now it is important to note that when you withdraw from your pension the money you take out will be subject to income tax that is applied in whichever year you are realizing that income. If we go back to our example of taking out 15k in one particular tax year and we are withdrawing it in this tax year, that amount we are withdrawing is above the personal allowance threshold, which is an income that anyone can earn in the UK without paying any income tax on. The allowance value currently stands at 12,570 and therefore 2,430 of our 15k will be subject to 20% income tax. Now there are certain tax exemptions to pensions that everyone is entitled to and that is you can take up to 25% of your pension in a tax-free lump sum payment but we mention this a little bit more later on. So with that cleared up let's understand the key pros and cons of using a drawdown method. Starting with the pros first up is flexibility. Drawdowns provide flexibility in accessing your pension savings. You can choose how much to withdraw and when to withdraw it allowing you to adapt your income to your changing needs during retirement. Secondly, it offers further investment potential. By keeping your pension funds invested in the market, you have the potential for further growth. If your investments perform well, your pension pot can continue to increase in value, potentially providing you with a larger income in the future. The next benefit is that you are allowed to take up to 25% of your pension pot as a tax-free lump sum. So in a simplified terms, if we go back to our 100K example that we have in our pension pot, we can withdraw up to 25K as cash as a tax-free lump sum. Now this in itself does require a further explanation and to avoid this being a very long video, check out this video here on how to take tax-free payments from your pension pot. Now moving on to the cons. 
First up is investment risk. Keeping your pension funds invested in a drawdown means they are subject to investment risk. Poor investment performances can result in a decrease in the value of your pension pot, impacting your future income. Secondly is not having a guaranteed income. Unlike annuities, spoiler alert, they provide a guaranteed income for life. Drawdowns do not offer this certainty. Your income will depend on the performance of your investments and the amount you choose to withdraw, which can fluctuate over time. And poor planning or circumstances can result in not having enough money in your pension pot to last your lifetime. And lastly, drawdowns are quite complex, especially when compared to annuities. They require a lot of financial planning and understanding of tax rules and regulation to ensure that it is done correctly for an individual circumstance. Now we move on to the other option that is available and that is annuities. Annuities are financial products that provide you with a regular retirement income in exchange for your savings, which is typically funded by your defined contribution pension. It is designed to provide you with a guaranteed stream of income during your retirement years. Now, there are many types of annuities available that you can choose from, and I'll highlight the key ones here now. First, you have the lifetime annuity, which is the most common type of annuity in the UK. It provides a regular income for the rest of your life, regardless of how long you live. The income can be paid monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. You can also choose whether the income remains the same throughout the term, this is called level annuity, or that it increases in line with inflation, inflation-linked annuities. Another type is enhanced annuities, and these are designed for individuals with certain health conditions or lifestyle factors that may reduce their life expectancy. These annuities offer higher income payments compared to a standard annuity, as they take into account your health and potentially shorter life expect expectancy. The third type is a fixed term annuity. With this product, you will receive a regular income for a predetermined period, typically between five to 25 years. At the end of the term, you have the option to reinvest the remaining funds or purchase a different annuity altogether. You also have investment-linked annuities. These are also known as variable or unit-linked annuities. These annuities are linked to underlying investment funds. The income you receive depends on the performance of the chosen investment. The value of your pension pot can fluctuate with market conditions affecting your income payments. Another type is a deferred annuity, which allows you to delay the start of your annuity payments. During the deferral period, your pension pot remains invested and has the potential to grow. This type of annuity is suitable if you do not need immediate income and you want to maximize your savings before retirement. So those are the key annuity types, but how much do they cost? Just to give you an idea of how much an annuity can give you, I did a recent search on how much £100,000 would get me if I wanted to start claiming it at the age of 55, which is currently the earliest retirement age, until the day I die. I selected a level lifetime annuity, which provides lifetime protection, but does not protect me from inflation. In today's market, it would earn me just short of £6,000 per year. Depending on your situation, this may not be substantial, so you need to play around with the options to figure out what works for you. I would actually suggest you reaching out to your pension provider first before shopping around. And this also highlights the key point of making sure that you start saving in your pension pot early. As you can see, £100,000 only gets you £6,000 in annuities, which isn't great. Now that annuities have been explained, let's look at the pros and cons. Starting with the pros. First up is that annuities provide you with a guaranteed income stream for life or a specified period, ensuring a stable and predictable source of income during your retirement. Another pro is that it is a less risky option. Annuities help manage longevity risk, which is the risk of outliving your retirement savings. With a lifetime annuity, you receive income for as long as you live, eliminating the worry of running out of money. It also eliminates investment risk. As once you purchase an annuity, the responsibility for managing investments and dealing with market volatility no longer become a concern. A c -c -c concern. Which makes it a more appealing option for individuals who prefer a more hands-off approach and are not comfortable with investment decisions. A third pro is that some annuities offer inflation-linked protection. This means your income increases over the time to mitigate the impact of rising living costs, and therefore you maintain the purchasing power of your income during retirement. And lastly, some annuity contracts include death benefits as well, allowing you to provide financial support to your beneficiaries in the event of your death. This can be in the form of continued income payments for a specified period or a lump sum payment. Moving on to the cons. The first con is that annuities are generally irreversible once purchased. Once you commit your pension funds to an annuity, you cannot change your mind or access the lump sum again. 
this lack of flexibility can be a disadvantage if your financial circumstances change. And this actually leads on to my second con, which is annuities limit your control over your pension funds. Once you convert your savings into an annuity, you no longer have access to additional capital or the ability to make changes to your income payments. Another con is that because annuities are designed to provide guaranteed incomes, this often means they may offer lower returns compared to other investment opportunities. The trade-off for guaranteed income is the potential for lower overall growth on your pension savings. Of course, as those are drawdowns and annuities explained. Now, deciding which is the best between the two will really be left up to individual circumstances. Depending on your stance on key characteristics can help determine which is the best option for you, such as your stance on flexibility, investment risk, longevity risk, control and stability, just to name a few. Both drawdowns and annuities involve complex decisions that can significantly impact your retirement income. Seeking advice from a qualified financial advisor or pension specialist can help you understand these options and evaluate the pros and cons and make an informed decision tailored to your specific circumstances and goals. And in addition to this, there is actually nothing stopping you from choosing both. If your pension pot is sizable enough, it may make sense to convert a proportion of your pension as an annuity and with the remainder kept into a drawdown to strike that perfect balance. Cool, so that is it for this week's video. If you found this video incredibly useful, I would really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. See you later. Bye. Bow.